ironclad Meginga is roughly half the size of a football pitch. Yet it's home to over 1,000 people. Rising out of the waters of Africa's Lake Victoria, Meginga is one of a cluster of three islands. And for me, it was a mystery why the people of Meginga were willing to put up with such squalid conditions when there are two bigger, completely uninhabited islands just a stone's throw. I managed to find it. And there's no turning back now. Don't know we're coming, that's the problem. So we don't know if they're going to accept us, or if they're going to welcome us, or how we're going to accept us. <laughs> when I asked the fishermen in Sori why no one lived on the other islands, many of them told me it was because of the evil spirits that lived there. And that's why they remain empty. Although I wasn't sure how much I believed in evil spirits, as Maginga came into view, I couldn't help but wonder what I was letting myself in for. I was greeted by Maginga's so-called chairman. How's the fishing here? Fishing is good, but nowadays the fish is... They hadn't heard anything about evil spirits, but told me about some of the very real threats on Meginga. They kept telling me how it was a disputed territory on the border between Uganda and Kenya, with both countries having a military presence there. They also told me that in the past, visitors had been harassed and even robbed at knife point. So I had half a mind to turn the boat around and go back to the mainland. So I've just finished about three hours of negotiations with the Kenyan police and it turns out that we don't actually have the right documents to film here. And they said we'd have to go back to Nairobi to speak to the government and then come back and blah blah blah. And it's not a fact that we would still get permission anyway. Um, but we managed to come to some sort of arrangement. Uh, and now things seem okay. We filled out the guest book, which includes your passport number, your date of birth, your name. Our run-ins with the authorities didn't exactly make me feel welcome. And Maginga's inhabitants didn't seem too happy about our presence either. After Apache sleep, I went to try and speak to some of the islands. Hey. Eric has lived on Migingo for almost a decade now and has a very personal connection to the island's troubled past. His brother was there when the Ugandan military took Migingo by force. <laughs> As Eric got ready to head out to the lake, I thought I'd speak to the chairman, John and Edward, to see if I could find out who claimed the island first. The first came here yeah. was a Ugandan, was called Joseph Nsuboga. Some people followed him and came to the island from Uganda. From Uganda. Yeah. 
<laughs> so this is probably the main street. Uganda people. Oh, Uganda people. Yes. So it's all this. All, all this Mimi. This house is in here. Ah. It's for Uganda people. All of Mikingo's Ugandan houses. Joseph Nsubuga's bar was probably delighted by their passion for football. It turns out that most of the buildings on the island have Ugandan owners who rent them out. Saying I spent some time on Miginga, but I still hadn't got to the bottom of the mystery of the other islands, the whole reason behind my visit. So I was still keen to find someone who could tell me why the other islands remain pretty much uninhabited. Eric had invited me to go fishing with him, but has a big problem with pirates. Eric's boat looked like it had seen its fair share of repairs, and once he's cast his 90 meter net, he sleeps on the boat until morning to save fuel on the return journey. But with the potential dangers on the lake, I thought it best not to hang around. After spending another night being kept awake by loud music and shouting, I couldn't help but wonder how Eric got on. So while I waited for him to return, I decided to learn more about Miginga's pirate problem. All the fishermen hand over their catch, which is mostly Nile perch, and receive payment at the same weighing station. The fish is then transported back to the mainland and from there it's shipped all over the world. Not only is Nile perch more abundant around Miginga, but this bulk selling helps fishermen like Eric earn over twice as much as they would back on the mainland. However, as with any resource-based economy, life on Miginga flourishes and wanes with the catch. It turns out both John and Edward seem to have business interests all over the island. As well as charging us a fee for every day we stayed, both owned boats and employed people to fish. Meginga has pretty much everything you'd expect to find in a town ten times its size. Among its many businesses are hairdressers, grocery shops and restaurants. I also heard there was a less savoury business on the island. Yes, in the Ogesha. This advice for Very big. <laughs> very, very big. It seems like it's a very kind of male orientated island. You know, the, most of the men here are fishing. What's it like as a woman on the island? I heard that there were a lot of women who sell themselves on the island. Women? Yeah. Like 80 to 90 percent. They don't have business. Yeah. Same, you can find a woman going with seven men at a, a one, night. in one night. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's what they do, but they don't have their own businesses. Mm -hmm. It was my last evening on Miginga, so I thought I would celebrate with Eric at one of the bars with some of the locally brewed. But oh, it's like a home, a homemade spirit. Yes, yeah. yeah, great. So 
So it turns out that the real reason so many people live on Mikinga is simple. It's secure and less steep than the surrounding islands. The rumors I'd heard about evil spirits were false, but that doesn't make the island or its people any less interesting. And I didn't feel that my time there had been wasted. People migrate, now who will remain here? Nobody. So, was I sad to be leaving the Gingo? No. But far from being an island plagued by conflict and tension, I found a place where people were living together peacefully and thriving, completely indifferent to the politics of the outside world. Many of the people we spoke to compared Miginga to a prison, and I couldn't help but agree. But that makes it all the more humped to send money to their families back home, whether they be in Kenya or Uganda. <laughs> bye bye, Eric. Take care. All the best. I hope the fishing picks up for you. Take care.